Welcome to Lecture 16, Privacy at School. The constitutional rights of students, including the right of privacy, are not automatically suspended at the schoolhouse door. However, due to the special responsibility that teachers and administrators have to provide a safe and disruption-free learning environment, the privacy rights that students enjoy at school are less robust than in other settings, and the courts have given school officials greater flexibility in curtailing privacy rights in order to maintain discipline and to fulfill the academic purposes of a school. The privacy rights of students are usually implicated in one of four contexts. School searches, surveillance, drug testing, and student records. Let's briefly review the current state of the law in each of these four areas. First, school searches. As we all know, the Fourth Amendment protects against unreasonable searches and seizures. A search by law enforcement authorities usually requires a search warrant based on probable cause to believe a person has committed a crime or that a place contains evidence connected with a crime. In the context of schools, however, the rules are somewhat relaxed. In 1984, the U.S. Supreme Court in New Jersey v. TLO articulated the standards and rationale to be applied in school searches. These standards remain in force today almost 30 years later. In TLO, a principal searched the purse of a high school student when he suspected she had been smoking in a school lavatory, which was a violation of school policy. In searching the student's purse, he discovered a small amount of marijuana, a number of empty plastic bags, and a large number of $1 bills. The principal notified the student's parents and the police, and TLO subsequently confessed that she had been selling marijuana at the high school. The state subsequently brought delinquency charges against TLO in juvenile court, and TLO moved to suppress the evidence found in her purse as well as her confession, which she argued was tainted by an unlawful warrantless search. In upholding the validity of the search, the Supreme Court held, one, that the Fourth Amendment does apply to school searches, but two, that a search warrant is not required before searching a student, and three, that only a reasonable suspicion by school officials that a student has violated the law or school rules is legally required to conduct a search. Reasonable suspicion is a significantly lesser standard than probable cause. The court gave deference to the unique environment that exists in schools. The court noted that requiring a warrant before searching a student suspected of an infraction of school rules would unduly interfere with the disciplinary procedures needed in schools. Similarly, the court noted that the school setting requires some modification of the level of suspicion of illicit activity needed to justify a search. Requiring probable cause, said the court, would be unduly burdensome on school authorities in maintaining order in the schools. The rationale and holding of TLO has subsequently been applied to uphold the authority of school officials to conduct searches of lockers and backpacks and searches of student cars parked in a school parking lot. In addition, the rules that apply to school searches may be extended to off-campus activities that are sponsored or sanctioned by a school. In Safford U.S. School District No. 1, versus Redding, the Supreme Court set out the standards for when a strip search is unconstitutional. Because a strip search is highly invasive, school officials must have an individualized suspicion that a student is hiding contraband or a weapon in order to justify a strip search. The court did not conclude that strip searches are a per se Fourth Amendment violation, but they must be reasonably related to the justification for the search and, quote, not excessively intrusive in light of the age and sex of the student and the nature of the infraction, end of quote. 
Let's move to the second context where student privacy rights are most often implicated, surveillance. In light of the 1999 shooting at Columbine High School in Colorado, and more recently the shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Connecticut, schools have adopted stricter safety measures, including installation of metal detectors and surveillance cameras. These measures have all withstood constitutional challenges when school officials reasonably believe they are necessary for school safety. Several school districts have recently initiated programs requiring students to wear RFID-enabled identity tags while at school. There is current litigation pending seeking to invalidate such a rule in Texas on the grounds, among other things, that the requirement constitutes an invasion of the student's privacy. The third area where a student's privacy rights in schools are implicated involves drug testing. In 1995, in the case of Veronia School District v. Acton, the Supreme Court ruled that athletes can be tested for drugs without any individualized suspicion of drug use. The court noted that student athletes are used to being in locker rooms and showers together where there is not an expectation of privacy. The court noted that it has long recognized that a search unsupported by probable cause nevertheless can be constitutional where, quote, special needs beyond the normal need for law enforcement make the warrant and probable cause requirement impracticable, end of quote. The court observed that school athletes have a reduced expectation of privacy because there is, quote, an element of communal undress inherent in athletic participation, end of quote. Regarding the taking of urine samples, the court noted that the school district policy was reasonable, was not unduly intrusive in the manner in which it was administered, and was justified by the severity of the need met by the search, that is, deterring drug use in schools. In 2002, in Board of Education v. Earls, the rationale in Veronia was extended to uphold the constitutionality of a school policy requiring all students participating in any extracurricular activity to be drug tested. The fourth context in which student privacy rights are implicated revolve around student records. The Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, known as FERPA, is a federal law that protects the privacy of student education records. The law applies to all schools that receive funds from the federal government, which in practicality includes most private schools. FERPA gives parents certain rights with respect to their children's education records. These rights transfer to the student when he or she reaches the age of 18 or attends a school beyond the high school level. Students to whom the rights have transferred are eligible students. Parents or eligible students have the right to inspect and correct errors in a student's education records maintained by a school. Generally, schools must have written permission from the parent or ed eligible student in order to release any information from a student's education record. However, FERPA allows schools to disclose those records without consent to certain parties, including school officials with a legitimate educational interest, other schools to which a student is transferring, to comply with a judicial order or lawfully issued subpoena, and appropriate officials in cases of health and safety emergencies. Schools may also disclose without consent so-called directory information, such as a student's name, address, telephone number, date of birth, honors and awards, and dates of attendance. However, schools must tell parents and eligible students about directory information and allow parents and eligible students a reasonable amount of time to request that the school not disclose directory information about them. This opt-out option, however, does not apply to military recruiters or to the Pentagon. Thus, a school must disclose directory information to representatives from these agencies.
In addition, some records maintained by schools are exempt from FERPA, including records in the sole possession of school officials <clears throat> and records maintained by a law enforcement unit of the educational institution. In 2002, the U.S. Supreme Court was asked to decide whether the often used practice of teachers asking students to score each other's tests, papers, and assignments violated FERPA. The court held the practice did not, noting that the term education records in FERPA does not cover student homework or classroom work. FERPA only covers institutional records that are retained in a permanent file as a matter of course, said the court. After the shootings in 2007 at Virginia Tech University, where 32 students and faculty were killed, it was determined that many people within the university knew about the shooter's mental instability, yet did not share that information with others because of a widespread an incorrect belief that FERPA and other information privacy laws prevented such sharing. The U.S. Department of Education subsequently amended the FERPA regulations to clarify that student information could be disclosed in a health or safety emergency. In next week's lecture, we continue our discussion of privacy and place, this time focusing on privacy at work.